Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. This tutorial is on decimal literals. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my website here, www.javacjava.com. Click on the begin button and come down here to the decimal literals tutorial. Decimal literals are whole numbers of the base 10 numbering system. They are a subgrouping of the general category of integer literals. Whether you, aware of, whether you are aware of it or not, you have been using the base 10 numbering system since you were a small child. Out of all the integer literals, decimal literals are the most commonly used. Don't confuse decimal literals with floating point literals. Contrary to their name, decimal literals cannot contain a decimal point. Decimal literals are whole numbers that can be assigned to variables of the following data types. Byte, char, short, int, and long. Let's go ahead and scroll down here and cut all, copy all this stuff here so you're not watching me type it in for 15 minutes. Hit control C or you can right click on it and copy. Let's go ahead and get the browser off, off the screen here. And let's go down to start search type in cmd to open up a command prompt if you're running windows 7 or earlier you can go to start and run and type in cmd now we've got our command prompt open type in java c and press enter so let's see a bunch of stuff go by here and if you don't then you don't have the java development kit installed properly um, if that's the case go ahead and go to my tutorial for installing the Java development kit, the JDK, and then uh, once you've got that installed, you'll be able to do all the rest of the tutorials with no problem. Let's type in CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash, which is short for change directory, backslash specifies the root. MD Java, which will make directory Java. I already have it, so it's gonna tell me it exists. If you don't, it'll go ahead and create it. CD Java. CD is change directory once again. We're going to do make directory decimal literals. And basically I just type in CD, hit D there, and then hit tab on the keyboard and it filled in the rest of that directory folder for me there. Just a nice little shortcut tip for DOS. Uh, notepad decimal literals dot java decimalliterals.java is going to be our source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Okay, we'll hit Control v to paste all that in, or we could right-click and select paste either way. So we've got our class de definition of decimal literals. We've got our main method entry point here. Um, in this little comment here, we specify that the range of a byte is negative 128 to 127 positive. We could actually put in a plus 127 right here, but without that in there, it's just, it's kind of like inferred. So here we've got um, a data type of byte. We've got our variable B1, our assignment operator, and our literal, negative 128. Down here we got B2 with our literal of 127. Um, if we tried to assign 130, it would give us an error because that's too large for a byte to hold that value. A short data type will hold negative 32,768 to 32,767. Um, I didn't put the comma in here, but note the, um, basically on the short data type, we've got an S1 variable name, assignment operator, negative 32,768. And note the optional use of the underscore for better readability. Now up here in the comment here, you can put in whatever you want. Commas work just fine, but if we were to put in a comma right here and try to compile that, it's gonna throw us off on an error. So you can include the underscore character basically anywhere you want <clears throat> with a couple of exceptions to that, which I'll go over here in, a in just, a, just a minute. So we've got our short value, S1, S2, being assigned to the lowest value and then the maximum value. Um, char, which is the char data type, its range is 0 to 65,535. Um, same thing, got C1 and C2 variables assigned to the uh, decimal literal of 0 and the decimal literal of 65,535. The int data type range is this 
to this for the maximum and we got an I1 and an I2 with the minimum uh, data range and the maximum data range. So the decimal literal here is the maximum that the int can hold. Now the long is special. The long's range is it's pretty large. It goes from you know negative whatever this giant number is to positive this number and everything in between there. So now um, you have to include a postfix letter uppercase L or lower L at the end of the literal. If the literal is larger than this number right here, and this number right here happens to be the max value of an int. Um, or if it's smaller than this number here too, as well as the negative side, then you have to include the L as well, okay? And the L just basically flags the compiler that this is a, a long value. Otherwise it goes off on a, a funky error, so. We've got x1 assigned to that, and you've got our, we've got our L postfix here, and then the maximum value for the long assigned to variable x2. So this particular decimal literal has to have an L on it here, and this one, this decimal literal has to have an L here. This one, however, does not, because it is um, the same size as the maximum, so uh, as an integer and you can everything inclusive on an integer you can assign to a long without having to specify specify l or l okay the last thing i'm going to go over here is <clears throat> the underscore usage rules specifically for decimal literals um, the underscore cannot be the first digit of a decimal literal you cannot have this this is going to go off on a compiler error. it cannot be the last digit of the decimal literal <clears throat> either excuse me um, there is no limit to how many or where they are placed. You can put them wherever you want. And multiple underscore characters can be placed together um, within your decimal literal there. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this guy. Pop back to our command prompt, do a clear screen to clean it all up here. Type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command line tool. Pass it the uh, compilation unit that we want to compile, otherwise known as the Java source code file. We'll go ahead and compile that. Everything worked good there. We'll, Java is uh, invokes the uh, decimal literals class, and we don't want to put the dot class on there. So anyway, we'll um, Java is the Java runtime or the Java virtual machine, and we're going to pass it the class that we want to invoke. So. And of course, just to reiterate, what that does is, is we're passing this, this class name up here, right? And that will cause the Java Virtual Machine to execute the main method that it finds inside of here, okay? And everything inside of the code block for the main method. So just a little quick overview on a uh, review on that, okay? We'll go ahead and do that, and we pretty much get everything that we expect there, right? Um, B1 and B2, that's their values. Short, that's their values. Char, uh, C1 and C2. C1 and C2 are 0 and 65,535. Uh, neither one of these are ASCII characters in the printable ASCII character set. Um, so basically it just prints like nothing and then a question mark just because it doesn't know what to, what to put in there. So. Um, the integer range, it prints off that. That's beautiful there. Uh, long, it prints off this, this, and this. And then, of course, it prints off our little underscore usage here as well. So we've got this one here, which is one followed by six zeros. And then the number 10 here, decimal literal 10. Um, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and just put uh, another line in here, just a blank line, make it a little more readable. And we're going to go ahead and uncomment this this first one out here because you cannot be the it cannot be the the decimal literal cannot be the let me start over on that the underscore cannot be the first digit of the decimal literal so we're going to go ahead and save this <coughs> clear our screen I just hit the up arrow on my keyboard by the way as a little shortcut to pull up the last commands there we'll type in we'll put in the Java C we'll recompile this. And as you can see, we get an error right here. It's got this line 28, cannot find symbol, and it's got a little caret pointing to the underscore, right? Um, 
So that's that's what's going on. And, and of course, this mess, error message is cryptic, cannot find symbol, you know, cannot be the first digit of the decimal literal is the comment that I put in, you know, that that didn't come from the compiler right there. That's that's this right here. So it's pointing to this line, doesn't like the underscore character, and it says cannot find symbol. So sometimes the messages aren't don't really describe well what's going on there. But we'll go ahead and comment this line out and then uncomment this one. We'll save this. And let's go ahead and compile this again. And now you can see we get an error illegal underscore, right? This is a much, much better error here than the other one where it's first one. Cannot find symbol, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but when it's at the end, illegal underscore, that's fantastic. It's pointing to the underscore. Could, cannot be the last digit of the of the decimal literal, which is perfect. So that's that works out good there. Let's go ahead and comment that out. Compile it, run it, bada boom, bada bing. Everything that we were expecting there. Looks like I kind of stuck this in the, the wrong place there. Let's go ahead and save that, compile it, run it again. Okay, this kind of splits our long stuff apart from the the other stuff with the underscores. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Close out of that. That concludes this tutorial. Please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.